This is the XP Pen Artist 15.6. Some of you might be thinking, didn't he already review this? I actually reviewed the XP Pen Artist 16 last year. That's the old version. There's already a new version out and I'm taking a look at it today. Hey, guys, my hand? I can't feel my hand? The XP Pen Artist 15.6 is a pen display. That is a monitor that you connect to your Windows or Mac computer that you can also draw on using the included pen. The screen is 15.6 inches corner to corner, hence the name, and it comes with the new XP Pen uh, pen. That's this guy. It's a good shape, feels good to hold, kind of triangular, doesn't roll off your desk, and it now has 8,182 levels of pressure sensitivity. It's the same pen that came with the XP Pen Artist 13.3, this guy's little brother, that I reviewed last month. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The script here clearly says to talk about the buttons. So, uh, yeah. Uh, it has buttons. There's six of them, all adjustable, all along the side. The screen has this textured matte coating that feels identical to its little brother, the 13.3. I really like drawing on it. It gives your pen a little bit of resistance, feels kind of paper-ish. Gives me more control when I'm drawing. The one downside is that it does dull the colors a little bit. I don't mind. I'd rather have the control than, say, a glossy screen that gives me better color. That's just me. Now, the one thing that happened with my 13.3 is that I got a really nasty scratch on the screen. I'm not sure how. I think I placed my keyboard on it. I wasn't like banging it with the keyboard, but whatever I did was enough to put a nice gnarly scratch on it. And after my first night of using the 15.6, I managed to get a little small scratch on this one as well. Now the pen's not going to scratch it. I drew pretty darn hard with the pen. The pen isn't going to scratch it, so you don't need to worry about that. But in general, you do need to be careful with this screen. I do think the screen looks good. It's a full HD 1920 by 1080. I didn't have to do any kind of color corrections or adjustments on it out of the box. I thought it looked good. Take this all with a grain of salt. I am not a big color horse. Well, on the side, the device has a USB-C slot that you're going to be plugging everything into in order to run it. It doesn't come with a USB-C cable, however. That didn't bother me because I don't have a place to plug that in. What it does have is a USB-C cable that leads out to an HDMI cable that also has some USB cables, standard USB cables, coming out of it. Kind of hard to describe, but I'm showing a picture here, so you could be like, oh yeah, that's what he's rambling on about. And if you don't have an HDMI port, but a mini display port, this comes with a little adapter for you. One thing you are going to miss with this device that the older version has is a stand. The older version, the 16 I reviewed last year, came with a really solid stand. It screwed into the back of the tablet. It wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't going to move. It made it bulkier, but it made it easier to use, too. There's a trade-off. XP Pen does have its own stand. It's pretty solid, sold separately, and it's fairly inexpensive. I named mine the alligator because it could take your finger off if you're not careful. Okay, the pen. Now I can talk about the pen. You guessed it. This is the same pen that came with the 13.3 I reviewed in the fall. I had some problems with the smaller 13.3 I reviewed last month. The lines it drew were wobbly and it was kind of inconsistent between drawing programs. Some were okay, others were really bad. And I also really liked the pen on the older version of the 15.6. So I will confess, I was a little worried about this when I first saw it. Change from a battery powered pen to this EMR pen. Now usually an EMR pen, which is a pen without a battery, has less line wobble to it. Since they don't have the batteries, they also don't need to be charged to replace. So after using it, I'm relieved that I can say that it performs more consistently than the 13.3 did. It has some of the drawbacks you'd expect from this kind of device, mostly parallax. Because of the screen thickness, there is some distance between where the cursor appears and where your pen tip actually is on the screen. You also get things like less accuracy as you get closer to the edges, but that's the sort of thing you get used to, and you're not really drawing near the edges anyway. But for an inexpensive Wacom alternative, this is a very good pen. It's not quite as good as the Artisol pen that I reviewed a few weeks ago. I would say that it is very similar feeling to the previous version pen, even with the extra levels of pressure sensitivity. It holds pressure well. The pen pressure never really blows out anywhere along the pressure curve. If you want a medium line, no problem. Light line, you're good. Dark line, great. It's consistent, and that's what I'm looking for. When running through my test, I found a little bit of wobble on the slow diagonal lines. And it's not something I noticed so much when I was drawing, but definitely noticed when I was testing. And it's something you should be aware of if you're looking for really crisp, clean ink lines. The thing almost no Wacom alternative can do is draw lightly. But this, this can do it. It has a very good initial activation rate. One thing you will find on the Wacom tablets is tilt control on the pen. You don't have that here. You can't toggle your focus between monitors with a shortcut. If you want to do that, you're going to have to dive into the settings and manually do that every time you want to switch screens. I should mention the price. I usually don't do that because whenever I do, they lower it the next day like clockwork. But what's important about the price here is it's less than $100 than the older one. Although this one doesn't come with a stand, you can get a pretty good one for like under 50 bucks. So I don't 
don't think that's a deal breaker. I ended up using the Artisol stand with it. I don't know. I like that stand. I always have. And it won't damage your limbs. Anyway, I'll link both stands down below. You can choose. Now, I know I've mentioned several different tablets here. If you want a full rundown of all the tablets like this that I have reviewed and liked, and even the ones I didn't like, check out my site. I got a link down below. I'll link it up in a card here if you want a link to those reviews as well. Now, if you're looking at this versus the Artisol D16, one of its closest competitors, this one is cheaper, almost $150 cheaper. The trade-offs that you're going to be making are a slightly wobbly pen and a screen mat that might scratch if you're not careful with it. I am a touch concerned about how this is going to hold up over time, especially if you're rough with your gear. I should point out that the matte texture on top is not like a screen protector. It's not something you just peel off. And I have a feeling that trying to like buff out any scratches you get on there is just going to make it look worse and probably blur out that area. But this one passes the test. If you're looking for an inexpensive Wacom alternative, this is a good one to look at. Thank you for watching, guys. As always, I'd like to thank the folks over on Patreon who support this channel every month. Thank you, guys. Also, if you have any questions or comments, hook me up down below. I'll try to answer all the ones I can.